You know, it's not often that I start one of these videos with a paint problem, but pinholes in the clear coat are a particularly frustrating and annoying problem to be confronted with, especially if you don't know what's caused them or how you're going to prevent them from happening in the future. Now, these defects are a result of mistakes made during waterborne base coat application. They are not related to mistakes with putty or polyester products, nor are they related to application mistakes of surfacer or filler, and are certainly not a result of poor cleaning where any wax or silicone or grease deposits have been left behind. They normally occur in solid color base coats, most notably reds and whites, and are a direct result of over application of the base coat where the painter is trying to achieve full coverage in one and a half coats. Using the right color undercoat will help you greatly reduce the risk of pinholes as you won't over apply the base coat. If you're not sure of which colour to take, please check the colour tools, find the colour formulation for the car, and you will see an indication given there as to which colour to use. Another added benefit of this is, of course, that you will actually apply less base coat. The correct adjustment of the base coat is vitally important. Please use the climate guide to help you and choose a setting appropriate to the climate in place at the time of painting. Remember, the more extreme the climate, such as hot and dry conditions, the more potential there is for a problem. That's the first coat of base coat applied. Normally this would be, as you know, in a one and a half coat continuous process. But I just wanted to take the time to see, is there a difference? And quite clearly, I can still see the gray surface or filler underneath, whereas the white is obliterated in the first coat. This means, of course, on the white, I only gonna need that half a coat more. On the gray, I might need to apply two coats, meaning I'm gonna use more base coat and meaning more cost. So that's the second base coat applied and if I'm honest I've almost got coverage there, but I have an area of uncertainty around the area of the grey filler and I could just see it showing through very slightly. Now that means that I need to put one more coat of base coat there, meaning of course increased base coat usage, but also remember an increased risk of defects such as pinholes. Whereas on the white, it's completely covered, meaning that the job is now finished, I can get on with drying this and put my clear coat on and also I've greatly reduced the risk of any problems. Now I didn't apply the extra coat on the rear door because I wanted to show you after I flashed the base coat off the distinct difference in colour between the two panels. Here you can see it's a greyish white and in fact I can still see the shadow of the grey surface or filler underneath. Here I have the true colour. It's a question of what you prefer but I know which one I'd like because this is going to be right. You know, we are constantly innovating and improving our product systems to help you. And for these solid color base coats, we have our high-tech performance component, WT455. It will help you reduce process errors, and that's what I have in the gun, ready to paint this Hyundai. Painting this bumper, I need to be careful that I don't over apply the same area too many times, as of course it's necessary for me to paint all of these little complex shapes to make sure that I have full hiding. Choose a spray gun that is in line with the recommendations given in our technical data sheet. Remember, too big a nozzle size will over apply the material and can lead to problems with splashing and defect formation in that way. Inlet pressure is equally as important. Under atomized material will give a high film thickness and will lead to problems, whilst over atomized material or a very high inlet pressure will force more air into the surface and again this will lead to pinholes at a later stage. As for distance, you will have seen in the other videos how we apply. Keep a normal spray distance, concentrate on your overlaps and apply in an even closed film.
For drying the base coat, I have some options. I can either leave it at ambient temperature, let it do its own thing. I can increase the spray temperature within the cabin. Or, if available, like here, I have an in-booth blowing system. Now, these are normally set at a pre-designated volume of air and a temperature of around 38 to 40 degrees C. Most common in the market, though, are handheld venturis. And this is where sometimes people can go wrong. In as much as they come too close to the surface, and they put too much air and can in then induce pinholes in the surface. Our recommendation is a maximum of two bar inlet pressure, one meter distance from the object, and I like to use a, an angle which allows the air to flow across the panel, creating some gentle turbulence to draw the moisture out of the base coat and speed up the drying. Remember though, this is not recommended if you are using activated base coat. Well, if you were suffering from pinholes, I hope that you found the last few minutes of interest and will be useful to you. In the meantime, I need to get on and get this finished now. So, thanks for watching. Tschüss, das Vidanya, goodbye.